Hello and welcome to another video in my Getting to Know Web Course series. In this video, we will be taking a look at setting up advanced HVAC control automation to help accomplish a few different things within a single WebCore piston. The first automation will monitor the state of door and window contact sensors, and if your heat or air conditioning is running for five minutes, the piston will send a push notification to your phone, letting you know you might want to close your windows or doors to help prevent wasting energy. If after 10 minutes of your heat or AC running with the windows or doors not closed, your thermostat will turn off. The piston will then monitor the contact sensors that were opened and if all of your doors and windows are closed, will return the thermostat to its original operating state. The second automation of this WebCore piston will send an alert if your furnace or AC turns on and your thermostat is set to a temperature that could be achieved by simply opening some windows. For example, if you have your heat set to 68 degrees, but it's 73 degrees outside, you'll get a notification suggesting to open your windows. Likewise, if you have your AC set to 75 degrees and it's 73 degrees outside, you'll get a notification suggesting that you can open your windows to cool your house down and help conserve energy. The third automation controlled by this advanced HVAC WebCore piston will monitor any smart smoke detectors, and if smoke is reported, it will turn off your HVAC system to prevent possible spreading of smoke or fire. The piston will also send a text message indicating which smoke detector or detectors detected smoke. A quick safety warning, the automations in this video that involve fire safety are meant to be used in an additive capacity in your early detection and warning of possible harm to your household. The automations we go over should not be solely relied on as a mechanism to alert of possible smoke or fire, and they are not meant to be a replacement for any type of other alerting or functions of a smoke detector. Also, today is a great time to test all of your smoke detectors in your home. While I will do my best to be as thorough as possible going over how to create this piston, it is a bit more on the advanced side of things, so it would be good to have some basic knowledge already around WebCore and how it works. I will be going over what you need to set up a piston to do everything I mentioned by just following along, but I will not be going too deep into any particular topics. For that I recommend checking out the several other videos in my Getting to Know WebCore series where I go into greater detail on how things work, which I will have a link for in the description below. And as always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comments below, and I will do my best to help out. Also take note that for this to work, I'm using an Ecobee thermostat that was added into SmartThings using the free Ecobee Suite Manager. But as long as you have a thermostat that can be controlled through SmartThings or Habitat, and have a way to detect the temperature outside, then all of this should be easily recreatable by following this tutorial. To get started, we are going to create a new piston called HVAC Control. We are then going to create a few different local variables that will be used by the piston that will be different variable types. The first two variables will be boolean type and will be called smoke detected and HVAC manual mode. Both of these variables will not be set with an initial value. The next three variables will be device type variables that will have initial value set. The three variables are doors, windows, and detectors. As their names imply, you will set the different variables to the devices you want to use within the piston for your triggers. Because we are setting them with an initial value, these variables will not change unless you edit the piston. After that, we have two more device type variables that will be called detector smoke and open contacts. These variables will not be set with an initial value as they will be used to keep track of devices that trigger the piston. The next two variables will be string type variables and will be called open contacts list and detector smoke list. These variables will also be left empty and will be used for message formatting for when we send our notifications. The tenth and final variable for this piston will be a dynamic variable called HVAC state. This one will also be left empty and will be used to keep track of the HVAC system state when it is turned off to allow for automatic status restoration when appropriate. To accomplish all the different tasks of this piston, we will need a total of seven different if blocks. The first if block we will create is going to monitor for any doors or windows being open for five minutes while the thermostat is in a mode of either auto, cool, or heat. If this becomes true, then a push notification will be sent saying which doors or windows are open, and to close them, because the HVAC system is running. To get started, click on Add a New Statement under Execute. On the new window that opens, select Add an If, and then click on Add a Condition. Next, with physical devices selected, scroll down to the Variables section of the Device Picker menu and select the Doors and Windows variables. For the device attribute, select Contact. For this condition comparison, we will select Stays and then change the Compare To value to Open. Next, we will change the value for In the Last to 5 minutes. 
Finally, for this condition, we will click on the cog to access advanced options, and then under store the list of matching devices into variable, we will select the open contacts variable. Adding our second condition, we will be selecting the thermostat and its thermostat mode attribute. For comparison, we will be picking the condition is any of, and it will be set to auto, cool, and heat. Now that we are all set creating our second condition, we can click on add to go back to the main piston editor window. Next click on add a new statement under then, and on the new window that opens, select add an action. With the location selected, click on Add a Task. Next find Set Variable from the drop down menu and set the Open Contacts list string variable to equal the Open Contacts variable. Next click on Add More and then this time find the Send Push Notification task. Here we will put in the notification SmartThings will send, which will take advantage of the string variable we just populated to count the total devices that are open and list them out so that you can easily figure out which doors or windows need to be closed. For me, I like to have my push notifications saved within the SmartThings notification history. So I will set store messages to true. I'll have the exact text I use for my notifications in the description below if you'd like to copy them. Clicking on add will finish up our first if block. The second if block we will create is going to monitor for any doors or windows being open for 10 minutes while the thermostat is in a mode of either auto, cool, or heat. If this becomes true, the current thermostat mode will be stored, the thermostat will be turned off, and a notification will be sent. To create this if block, and because it's so similar to the first if block, we are going to actually just duplicate the first if block and make changes to it. To do this, click on the first line of the first if block and then right click on it, which will open a menu. On the menu that opens, click on duplicate selected statement. On the newly created if statement, let's first change the stays open trigger from 5 minutes to 10 minutes. Next click on location under with, under then, and under Devices, change location to our thermostat. This will allow us to interact with the thermostat directly. Click on Save to make sure the change is accepted. Next, click on the Push Notification task so we can make changes to the text. The text for this push notification will include which windows or doors have been left open and that the HVAC system has been shut off. Next, click on Add a New Task under the Send Push Notification task. On the window that opens, we are going to first select the Set Variable task where we will set the HVAC state variable to equal the thermostat's thermostat mode. The next task we are going to add is setting the variable HVAC manual mode to true. After, we need to rearrange the new tasks we added to be in the correct order to help prevent any issues from happening when the piston executes. To move a statement, click and hold the double arrow icon next to the line you want to move and drag the item. Once the item is where you want, you can let go of the double arrow icon and it will be moved. If you do not have the option to move statements, you can enable it by clicking on the double arrow icon on the top left hand side of the screen within the toolbar. The proper order for tasks should be as follows. First, HVAC manual mode variable is set to true. Second, HVAC state should be set. Third, open contact list variable is set to equal the open contacts variable. And fourth, a push notification is sent. Before being finished with our second if statement, we will need to add one more task at the end of the task list, and that is actually turning the thermostat off. This will be accomplished by selecting the set thermostat mode task and setting the value to off. And with two out of seven of our if blocks created, our piston is set up to alert when any doors or windows have been left open for five minutes and turn off the thermostat if any doors or windows have been left open for 10 minutes. The third if block we are going to create will monitor if any doors or windows are closed and if all doors and windows are in the closed state while smoke is not detected, and if the thermostat is in a mode of off while HVAC manual mode is set to true, then the thermostat will be set to its last recorded state automatically and send a push notification. To create the third if block, click on add a new statement at the bottom of the piston. On the window that opens, click on add an if, and then click on add a condition. For the first condition, we will select the doors and windows variables making sure that under what to compare states any of the selected devices in the orange menu. For the attribute, we will select contact once more, along with comparison type of changes to, and a comparison value of closed. The second condition will again be for all the doors and windows variables with an attribute of contact, but this time we will change the orange menu from any of to all of the selected devices. For this kind of comparison, we will select R with a value of closed. 
For the third condition, we will check if the variable smoke detected is set to true. I picked is not true, but you could select is false if you wanted to instead. The next condition will be with the thermostat in its thermostat mode. And we will use a comparison type of is with a value of off. For the fifth and final condition for the SIF block, we will select the variable HVAC manual mode and set the comparison type to is with a value of true. Next click on add a new statement under then and then select add an action on the window that opens. For this action, we are going to change the location to our thermostat to allow for interacting with it directly, and then click on add a task. The first task will be to set the variable HVAC manual mode to false. The second task will be to set the thermostat mode to equal the variable HVAC state. The third task will be to send our push notification to inform us that all the doors and windows are now closed and that the thermostat was turned back on. The fourth if block will be for if the thermostat is set to or starts to heat to a temperature that is less than the temperature it is outside. If this happens, a notification will be sent indicating that you could open the windows to allow the house to warm up instead of wasting energy. To create this if block, click on add a new statement at the bottom of the piston and on the window that opens up, click on add an if. For this if block, we are actually going to add a group instead of a standalone condition. So click on add a group. On the add group window, change the logical operator to logical or and click on add. This will create a group within the if section of our if block. Click on add a new condition within the brackets. The first condition we are going to add is if the thermostat's thermostat mode changes the heat. The second condition will be if the thermostat's thermostat operating state changes to heating. With the two conditions created, they should look like this. Note that they are both within the bracket and there is an OR in between them. We need to add a third condition, but this one will be outside of the group, so make sure to click on add a new condition under the brackets of the group. This third condition will be if the weather outside is higher than what the thermostat is set for. For me, I'm going to accomplish this by using the weather temperature attribute that's provided for my thermostat. For type of comparison, select is greater than. And for compare, we are going to select the thermostat's heating set point. For the action of the SIF block, we are going to simply send a push notification suggesting that opening the windows would allow for the house to warm up. So we can leave location selected after adding an action and then select the push notification task. With the text as desired and store and messages set to true, click on add to finish the SIF block. The next if block will be for if the thermostat is set to or starts to cool to a temperature that is greater than the temperature it is outside. If this happens, a notification will be sent indicating that you could open the windows to allow the house to cool down instead of wasting energy. To create this if block, we are going to go ahead and duplicate the last if block we just made. For this if block, we will change the thermostat mode to cool and the thermostat operating state to cooling. And the weather comparison condition will get changed so that the weather temperature is less than the thermostat's cooling set point. To finish off changing the duplicate if statement, we will update the push notification so the wording matches the house being cooled instead of being heated. The sixth if block will be for if any of the smoke detectors detect smoke. If any do, a text message will be sent indicating which detectors were triggered and will also turn off the HVAC system to help reduce smoke being spread through the house. For this if block, we will have a single condition. The condition will use the variable we created earlier called detectors, and we will be using their smoke attribute. Make sure that the orange box indicates any of the selected devices for this condition. For comparison type, select changes to, and for compare to, select detected. Before finishing the condition, click on the cog to access the advanced settings for the condition. Here under, store the list of matching devices and variable, select our detectors smoke variable. Once all set, click on add. After clicking on add an action on the new window that opens, from clicking on add a new statement, we are going to change location to thermostat to allow for us to interact with it directly. Next, click on add a task. 
Our first task will be to set variable, and we are going to set our smoke detected variable to true. As a reminder, this variable is used to prevent the thermostat from returning to a normal operating state when all windows and doors are closed. In order to override this, you'll have to go back into the piston manually and turn this to false. The next task will be to send a text message. Please keep in mind that you must be in a region where SMS is supported by your smart hub, otherwise you will be limited to only push notifications. For me, I choose not to store SMS messages in SmartThings history. The next task for this if statement will be to also send a push notification. I do both because I really want to increase my chances of being notified of smoke being detected in my home. The last task for this if block will be turn off, which will be used on the thermostat as it was the device chosen for the whole task list. The seventh and final if block for this WebCore piston will be if any of the detector's smoke attributes changes to clear and all the other detectors are in a clear state. This is similar to our if statement that checks if all doors and windows are closed. If all detectors are then clear of smoke, a push notification is sent indicating that smoke is no longer detected. Click on add a new statement at the bottom of the piston and click on add an if. Next click on add a condition. Then select the detectors variable at the bottom of the physical devices list. Make sure the orange drop down menu indicates any of the selected devices. For the first condition, we will use a smoke device attribute with a type of comparison or changes to with the value of clear. The second condition will again use the detectors variable, but this time change any of the selected devices to all of the selected devices. We use the same smoke attribute for this condition with a comparison of R and a value of clear. The action will be pretty simple for this one as it will just be a push notification saying that all the smoke detectors are now clear. With our piston fully created, let's save our work and test out how it works. As expected, opening a window and leaving it open for 5 minutes while the thermostat is set to heat triggers a notification being sent. Waiting 5 minutes longer, we get a notification saying the window has been left open and the thermostat turns off. Opening and closing a door while the window stays open does nothing to the current state of the thermostat. Once all of the windows and doors are closed, however, a push notification is received and the thermostat turns back to its previously set state. Setting the thermostat to heat with a heating set point that is lower than the outside temperature triggers a notification being sent, suggesting to open the windows as expected. Likewise, setting the thermostat to cool with a cooling set point that is higher than the outside temperature also triggers a notification being sent, suggesting to open the windows. To test out the smoke detector portion of this piston, I changed the piston to trigger on smoke changing to test instead of detected. As expected, when the piston is triggered for a detector, the HVAC is turned off and a text message is sent. Once the detector goes back to clear, a push notification is received, indicating that all the detectors are now clear. Take note that if you change the piston for testing, that you need to change it back after your testing is done. If you have any questions about this piston, don't hesitate to ask for help. And as always, if you have any suggestions on how to improve this piston or want to share your own ideas for home automations, feel free to do so in the comments below, as I'd love to hear more about your ideas. If you want a more in-depth look into variables and how they can be used within WebCore, I recommend checking out my What Are Variables video, where I take a deep dive into variables within WebCore, along with the different types of variables available and how to use them. Thank you for watching.